Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of MKE Arts Live. We are here at 88.9 to talk about dinner and a show. Our first guest tonight is the MSO, and here to play is Brian on the cello. Not Brian. Another round of applause for the amazing Peter Thomas. And Peter uh, from the Milwaukee Symph Symphony Orchestra was playing Julie O, a composition by Mark Summer. Thank you. All right, so my name is Adam Carr. I am your host of MKE Arts Live. Um, this is a showcase of the amazing talent in the arts and culture community here in Milwaukee. This is our fourth episode, as Katie mentioned, at the top of the show, and today's theme is dinner and a show. So um, I thank you to the United Performing Arts Funds for making this possible, and our guest here today is Brian. Just kidding, it's not Brian. 
Uh, it's Eric Johnson. Oh, Eric Johnson. Round of applause hey. for Eric. <laughs> So Eric, what do you do? Uh, I am a dancer for the Milwaukee Ballet. All right. Short. So we had a chance to talk the other day, and I learned Eric has an incredible background, and he performed, uh, he danced in Philadelphia, in Pittsburgh, in Rochester, New York, before, all before moving to Milwaukee at the age of 21. So you've had a long career already, and you've been here five years. And you kind of, it sounds like you grew up pretty quickly and ballet was a way that, ballet kind of shoved you into growing up and becoming an adult pretty early. Yeah, I guess that was sort of my, like moving out of my home at 17 was sort of my going away to college experience packaged differently, I suppose. Um, yeah, I, yeah, and then I moved here at 21. I think I, I grew up quickly, but I didn't know as much as maybe I thought I did. For sure. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. As it goes. Cool. So we were, when we were talking before, if the arts and culture community were a lunchroom and they're all sitting around having lunch and the orchestra is on this side and you know, the, everyone's sitting at their own tables, I got the sense that ballet dancers and people who do ballet are like the athletes yeah. of the lunchroom. Yeah, I like to say the jocks of the fine arts world. I so, didn't want to yeah. say jocks. <laughs> <laughs> I we're we're to... the most inappropriate. You put us in a room with any other people in the fine arts and we are, you would think that we're all 16. You know? It's just a lot of... Why do you think that is? Tell me a little bit why you <laughs> think know. ballet are the, <laughs> are the squirrely ones in the arts and culture I think it's community. just the environment. You, know, you work in a, like, this kind of closed, close, personal, physical environment and it's you know, it's also high pressure and you're putting on, you know, a lot of it's an illusion. So you were talking about radio when you get off. Um, yeah, you get off When it's not air. live, you know, you curse a bunch and whatever. It's kind of like that, you know, you're backstage, you know, you're, we're, uh, we're just messing around a lot, I guess. For sure, you got the pressure cooker on you, stage. Yeah, you can't provide the illusion unless you're allowed to let off some steam, you know, in the downtime, I guess. For sure. <laughs> if that makes sense. So in your uh, career, you started, you know, you were in Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, then Pittsburgh, then Rochester, now Milwaukee. These are all cities that, you know, you might call like industrial cities, yeah. right? Very blue collar cities. And you've been a ballet dancer yeah. in all of these places, which is not necessarily how the cities first identify themselves. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about kind of having a career as an artist, as a ballet dancer in these cities that might not that's not the first place they go to think about themselves. Um, yeah, I don't, I, don't, I don't know, I guess, sort of what it like, speaks to as like, an overarching theme, but I guess as an experience for an artist in those cities, um, I would say it has to do more with like, accessibility. Like, I've always felt that the places that I've worked for as a dancer have been accessible to their audiences um, as arts organizations. Because they're, it's not that they're not well established. Some of them have been there for a very long time. Um, but it's not this, you know, yeah, it's still a blue, a blue color city, I guess, in some ways. So it's like there's a, a more intimate rapport with the audience. For sure. I don't know if that makes sense. Absolutely. So um, you've been here five years now, living in Milwaukee. And our first conversation we had, you'd biked to the station. Our second conversation, you were holding a beer. <laughs> Seems like you're fitting in yeah. in Milwaukee. <laughs> um, and you've mentioned that you love Milwaukee. So tell me a little bit, like... What do you love about this city? Uh, it's, I, so I grew up in northern Illinois, um, and I don't broadcast that. Um, I am broad, no, I'm literally <laughs> broadcasting it. Not, not the time to not broadcast. <laughs> um, so I grew up with like Chicago was like the city that we would hang out in. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and moving to Milwaukee, I didn't come here. I would come here for shows when I was like a teenager. Um, and then moving back here to work, I was super pleasantly surprised by all the things that I sort of missed. So I think it's a great city. I love it. Um, I'm always like pushing Milwaukee on people. I think you know the arts are alive and well. The, you know, there's good food. The, you know, the bars are great, obviously. And yeah, it's just a great. It's an accessible, happening city. So I don't know. That's what I love about it. Cool. <laughs> it's right. where I live. It's my home now. For sure. Thanks. Yeah. So speaking of. Bars and beer, uh, we're gonna go to our video. So we're gonna have a little bit of a field trip now and in our minds through the magic of video production, we're gonna go to Good City Brewing. 
So uh, we are going to Good City. Uh, David Dupy is going to take us on a tour of Good City Brewing. Good City was born out of kind of two shared passions, the love of the city of Milwaukee and the love of craft beer. It's three of us, myself and my other two partners, Dan and Andy. All three of us were working in the beer industry and uh, we actually connected in uh, Portland, Oregon of all places back in 2015. We were attending the same craft brewers conference out there. Milwaukee, despite our strong beer heritage, uh, was just a little bit behind as far as new startups. And so we were really inspired to open an urban production brewery that kind of contributes to Milwaukee's resurgence. The way that we get most creative is with our barrel aging program. Within six months of opening, we had our first uh, barrel aged beer release, which was our density imperial stout, which had aged in bourbon barrels. And so there's a lot of creativity that goes into that between sourcing spe specific barrels, whether they be uh, bourbon barrels or Chardonnay barrels, and then we play around with different adjuncts and flavors in those barrels, whether that be vanilla or chipotle peppers. We're the official brewery of the Milwaukee Film Festival. That's what this brewery is about, is it's participating in Milwaukee's resurgence. That's what our brand's about. That's what Seek the Good, our motto, is about. It's really inviting all, all of Milwaukee stakeholders to participate in the city's resurgence. We wanted an open concept where customers feel like when we're brewing, as you can see right now, you feel like you're, you're close to the production process and you can actually interact with us. Come on back, guys. Let's check it out. Today we're brewing our Scotch Ale, Lord Lion. It's our seasonal. We're about to boil and uh, add the hops in probably 25, 30 minutes. Try to have about three different seasonals here on tap in the tap room. Um, this is one of our more popular ones. Yeah, <clears throat> tastes like fall. When we opened, we had uh, four fermenters. And um, as you can see, we filled out this row. Now we have nine fermenters. And then after that, we added uh, four uh, even larger fermenters over here. This is part of our expansion. Probably get up to about 5,000 barrels here in this, this space. This is where we package our beer. We're able to purchase a canning line, and so we're canning every Wednesday and uh, helping us to put out, right now we have uh, four brands and 12 ounce cans you can find throughout town. It's a great area, great part of town. So to see new life breathe into this building is, is really rewarding and uh, it's just it's fun to share that with, with our customers and I think it's just indicative of the overall just momentum that's going on in Milwaukee right now. All right. So that was Good City Brewing again and uh, shout out to Epic Creative for producing that video. We are joined on stage now with our, by three other panelists, and let me start with Guy. Guy Davies is the chef at Good City Brewing. Yep, the chef at Good City. All right. Amongst other things, I wear many hats there, I think. For sure. And then we are also joined by Claudia Guzman, who's at UWM Sociocultural Programming Department. Also, she is the co-programmer of Milwaukee Film Festival's Cine Sin Fronteras series. That's right. And Bobby Drake, who is a spoken word artist, a poet, an entrepreneur and a musician. That's it. All right. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, that's all. I was trying to that's be good. right. No, so. that's good. That's, you nailed it. So a round of applause for our panelists up on stage. <laughs> and my first question for them, given the theme of the show, dinner and a show, is I'm giving you the opportunity to plan an evening out for yourself, go to dinner and then a show. Where do you eat? What do you see? Who wants to start? I'll go. All right. Uh, probably go Gibraltar, um, kick it off. Hopefully Evan's playing. And then, uh, you know what? Dinner is probably going to be somewhere up the street, somewhere in the, in the, in the general vicinity. I'm not really sure. sure on the food. But it's, it's going to be within walking distance because uh, we're going to get pretty toasted at Gibraltar. <laughs> <laughs> Something to soak up. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's go next. Uh, I'll go next. Um, yeah, walking or biking for me, uh, for sure. You know, the, everything, walking is so great. Everything is so close together. You can do that, you know, from one place to the next. Um, uh, Easy Tiger on Brady Street. 
Mm. Evan makes great small plates inspired by food from all over the world. Um, and probably the Jazz Estate, because I love it. Mm. It's been there forever. Uh, guaranteed to get great music and have a good time. My favorite restaurant by far that I recommend to anyone who's visiting Milwaukee um, or that I take my guests to is La Merenda. So international small plates, call them tapas in Spain or hors d'oeuvres in France or appetizers in the U.S., but it's a beautifully uh, international menu, locally sourced and locally owned, so I love La Merenda. Uh, I spent my birthday by myself there this year. I love it that much. Um, and uh, for a show, I have to say some of the really most incredible shows I've ever seen were at Latino Arts uh, because it is a small venue and they can really attract nationally touring um, Latino performing groups. I got to meet Leela Downs, who's like my favorite uh, Latina woman in existence uh, today, uh, as well as I got to see La Santa Cecilia, and they're a Grammy uh, award-winning group that I got to see in a room about this big. So, incredible. Cool. We went to a show there once. Yeah. Yeah? All right. Pressure's on. I want to go to Gibraltar now. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've, uh, I have to say, <laughs> Fans Garden. Has anyone been there? Ooh, Fans Garden. National and 20th. Yeah, and National. Food. Yeah, sometimes I go back to back days. Wow. You know, fans. just hit it two days You're in a, a fan. row. I'm a You're big fan. fan. <laughs> uh, there's many others, but that's what I'm feeling right now. And then for a show, uh, I don't know, it's, it's my fantasy and I don't even know. Um, I, maybe just like public house or something and see some cool. friends play. Uh, I don't know, some dirty, violent punk or something. I don't know. You know so. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right. So, Dinner show with the theme again. Each of you are participate on one side of that thing up on stage. And people in Milwaukee can be thrifty when they go out. They're very intentional with how they spend money. So you guys as people that are recipients of dinner and a show dollars that are spent in this city, uh, what do you do and then how do you think about giving an audience what they paid for? Um, you know, I'm a chef. Uh, so. Food, number one, um, but the space and, and it, you're making uh, food or entertainment approachable to people and, and making people feel comfortable. I mean, number one, that's, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, we, that, that's what we do for a living, uh, offering that environment. You know, we have a, a factory, you know, our restaurant is smack bang in the middle of a factory. So it's, it's kind of exciting. You can be a part of the industry that we work in and the space that we've created um, just by stepping in the door. So really, it's our responsibility, well, my responsibility, to make sure that everyone has a great time when they get there. I would, uh, I would say <clears throat> intimacy. Um, a, lot of what, a lot of what we do is building, building the space for people um, to, um, to be able to relate to the character, to be able to emote, and to be able to talk about those things that they wouldn't normally talk about. Uh, so creating that moment of intimacy uh, in rooms not bigger than this size um, is, is the key, key element to me to, to having a good night and to providing something that means something. Um, yeah, I guess just getting people excited about dance and kind of breaking down that like it's Milwaukee ballet a lot of people think you know classical ballet and they kind of like uh, you know it sounds like a big night out maybe a, a boring one for some so it's like I'm always pushing we do a contemporary series in January and I'm always like go to that it's a triple bill it's three pieces it's like you know contemporary music often um, it, it's a nice introduction for people um, you know, into the world of dance. It's not necessarily classical ballet, and it allows them to sort of cut their teeth. And if you don't like something, 20 minutes later, it's another piece. For sure. You know, so it's pretty, that's what I would say, I guess. Cool. So I had to write some notes about my answer to this question because I wanted to thread both of my jobs together. And I think the commonality there is that I create opportunities for folks to explore both the unfamiliar, but also to see the familiar reflected. And oftentimes that familiarity is themselves. So whether we're talking about works of art like film and music or theater, or the subjects of books and lectures or workshops and discussions at the university, 
Um, I'm always mindful of that duality of both educating folks about the other or folks that are maybe less uh, represented in the arts, um, but also about affirming and uplifting those marginalized groups and making sure that they have spaces to see themselves and their, their stories uh, reflected in those, those cultural venues like the Milwaukee Film Festival, like the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee. Cool. So um, Milwaukee is a city that really likes comfort food. I mean that both like literally in terms of the food we eat, but then also metaphorically in terms of experiences. People like routine, like pattern. Um, we don't have a lot of time, I'm curious. So how do you guys balance the desire for familiarity from your audience, but then also a desire to push them beyond what they already know? Uh, I think personally I'm very aware of that comfort food, comfort zone um, of the Midwest in Milwaukee. You know, obviously, I'm not from here, so like to catch up, I had to kind of catch up the speed of like what people eat and wh what they all want when they walk in the door. Um, I offer some of that, but I never just offer it as the, the expectation would have it. I'm going to twist it a little bit. I'm going like, to get the, the best possible cheese I can possibly get to put in a mac and cheese. It's not just going to be Velveeta, you know? It's like, <laughs> um, so like, yeah, I'm going to give people what they want, but I'm going to push them a little bit on it. Um, and at, every once in a while, make them like, taste something a little bit different, go in a, a different direction. Um, my target audience at UWM is college students, so I'm always trying to strike the right balance between important educational content and being able to resonate with them and attract them. They are young folks, they've got their phones, sometimes that's all they want. Um, and so how do you get them to come out and, and learn something? Oftentimes it has to be through something that is familiar or a, or a pop culture reference. So, you know, we brought in Kareem Abdul-Jabbar last year, but he wasn't here to talk about basketball, he was here to talk about Muslim identity. Uh, we brought in two of the co-founders of Black Lives Matter and they talked about, you know, racism and mass incarceration and police accountability. And, and we couldn't necessarily have those conversations without those big names. Um, and so I'm lucky that I work with a budget within an institution that uh, most of those events are free and open to the public because it is an educational institution. Um, and then similarly with the film festival, we take the very familiar medium of film and the cultural institution that is the Milwaukee Film Festival and we throw in a documentary about Dolores Huerta or about Chavela Vargas and help people better understand the diversity within the Latinx diaspora. Um. I would say in terms, of, in terms of dance and in terms of the ballet, it again comes with kind of pairing the old with the new. A lot of people, um, a lot of the audience base, they want to see, you know, they want to see classical ballets, the things that you think of when you think of a ballet. And then you have to kind of sprinkle in, um, you know, new kind of contemporary cutting edge stuff that some people might sort of be uncomfortable with. So you have to kind of sneak in the, the experimentation, you know, for your, for for sure. your audience base. Cool. Um, well. We do one of the most uncomfortable things, and that's going to people's houses to perform. So that balance is, uh, is, is that push of going into someone who doesn't know you or having someone bring you into their home. Uh, we usually offset by doing it publicly first so they can see it, get comfortable with it, and, and breed that familiarity. And then we move from there. Cool. All right, so we, audience members, we're going to ask for questions from you now. So if you have any questions right now, Raise your hand, and Katie will bring the mic over to you. If you have a question, raise your hand. I actually have a lot of questions. <laughs> <laughs> I can keep going yeah. if you guys want we'll to. We'll keep talking if you don't. <laughs> All right, so think about a question, and I just want to actually give you guys an opportunity to plug anything you have coming up that you want to share so people can see. This has been a taste of each of you, but probably not the full flavor of what you actually do. So where can people go moving forward to see you doing what you do. You all can join me in the UWM Union Cinema for the 25th anniversary screening of Malcolm X on cool. Thursday, November 16th at 5.30, free and open to the public. Cool, very nice. Um, you can uh, follow that by coming to the Villa Terrace on November 17th, that Friday. Uh, we'll be doing the one-man show, Never Say Die, uh, that we've been pushing for the past year. It'll be our 37th show. And it would be awesome to have you. Suggested donation is $25. Cool. Cool. Uh, good. <laughs> uh, we have a, a great new space, Good City Hall, that we've built out. And uh, 
program, lots of great live music for it. Um, the next thing I'm really looking forward to is uh, a woman, Candace Springs. Uh, she's a singer, piano player, uh, signed to Blue Note Records. Uh, she's out of Nashville, and uh, I think it's just going to be a fantastic show. And that's uh, November the 15th. Wow. They're all good. clustered up. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, this coming weekend, the ballet opens La Boheme. Um, which I would say, go see. I, you won't see me in it. My brother's getting married, so I'll be in California. Um, but go support my colleagues and have a good time. It's a beautiful ballet, so, yeah. Cool. You can see me in Nutcracker. <laughs> <laughs> That's my next show. <laughs> so audience, question time. Got a question? I'm interested in hearing a little bit more about performing in people's homes, because you just toss that in me there too. like that's not unusual. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, you do it 35 times. It comes kind of natural. No, I'm joking. Um, I, so if we, I have a one-man show, and people can book me. Um, I give them our press kit, our marketing materials, and you uh, basically bring your friends to your home, uh, your friends and your family. And then from there, I come in, and I have a, a nice little PA set up, and I perform this, this arc of a show um, that talks about... Uh, an artist, pardon me, an artist who, um, whose love of his art overshadows his family and the family that he just started and how it unwinds. That's a drama that we follow with a talk back that dives into ambition and what is the cost of success and what's the price that we're paying and what's the price that you've already paid. And usually those talk backs go longer than the show itself. But, <laughs> Um, but it is free to book me, and then we do it for the suggested donation from your friends and family. And so that's how we're able to move the show. Okay. So, all right, question over here. Hi. Oh. Hi. Uh, my name is Stefan Dixon. I'm a student at the Milwaukee Institute of Art and Design. Um, and my question is for Bobby Drake. Um, as a poet, are there any... Uh, collectives or any organizations that you're involved with in the city of Milwaukee currently? A lot. Um, uh, we can start with Pentastic. Um, Pentastic I am is also involved. Yeah, that's why I asked. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> Are you? I'm like... I, that's why I'm like... We is that a, like, is we that a plan? Met, Do I know you? <laughs> Do we know? Uh, yeah, Pentastic um, uh, is, is actually having a slam tomorrow night. They have a Tuesday night at Gibraltar every week. Um, and then um, as well as, as Pick Up Lines and Poetry, which is at 3041 uh, once a month. And, um, oh, wow, I'm going to get yelled at about this later. Yeah. <laughs> Have this, you ever been to moment. Lyrical Sanctuary? <laughs> Lyrical <WM>. Sanctuary, <laughs> Jesus. And, uh, I was actually going to apologize to you, Claudia, because I actually live down the street from UWM, and there are so many events that I've not been able to go to just because of like bad timing with school because... I don't go to school at UWM, yeah. but I am going to go to this uh, screening of Malcolm X. Awesome. Definitely. And you know, the second Wednesday of the month, Lyrical Sanctuary, Lyrical Sanctuary. I do November know. 8th. I do know. A lot, of my, <laughs> a lot of my colleagues have performed there, and I work with um, Dasha Kelly um, in the Stillwaters Collective. I'm actually one of her TAs Great. that uh, do workshops in Milwaukee Public Schools, so... Awesome. That's why I'm like, cool. I'm surprised that we haven't met earlier. Right. Well, you know, the network is large. <laughs> no, Dasha, right? I was also very enterprising to use the Q&A session to be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> we should know each other. My, my question was, why haven't we met? That's why. <laughs> that's, that's, that's the question. Well, the answer is that you just did. So. <laughs> well, wonderful. So we are now going to have a performer join us on stage, uh, Jason Powell from the Milwaukee Opera Theater. And this is a special treat. This is an original composition that he wrote. It's named Sweetman Western Girl. Is that correct? <laughs> All right. <laughs> so Jason, this is a piece that he wrote and uh, debuted it for a show of songs about Milwaukee in our area. So Jason from the Milwaukee Opera Theater. No, no, no. <laughs> Thank you. Take it away. Glad to have Well, I was born right here in the Midwestern USA And I've lived here all the years since then Right up to the present day It's a pleasant place, God bless it And I'm willing to confess It doesn't lack a certain 
picturesque appeal but my foremost motivation to remain in this location is the allure of one particular ideal and that's a sweet midwestern girl whose beauty no one can deny an upbeat Midwestern girl with love and laughter in her eyes Sweet as sugar, sweet as candy, and as sweet as apple pie Oh, a sweet Midwestern girl would be such a treat for a Midwestern guy well, for me, it's not about the amber fields, the fruited plains, the salty earth, the crystal lakes, the kettles or moraines. And not to be contrary, but those houses on the prairie don't live up to ever wild and wilder hype. But I'll admit that my desire burns as hot as prairie fire in the presence of a certain archetype. Oh, it's that sweet Midwestern girl, oh yes, the kind that we all know. A replete Midwestern girl with a hearty heartland glow. As pretty as a pasture and as pure as driven snow. Oh, a sweet Midwestern girl who'd like a neat Midwestern bow. Here in the center of America is where I make my home But there have been a couple times I've had the urge to roam But on every occasion of attempted transmigration I never managed to get very far And what caused my course correction was a persisting predilection for a pervasively attractive avatar Oh, it's that sweet Midwestern girl She's still the focus of my plan A petite Midwestern girl I'll catch her if I can Perhaps a farmer's daughter With a charming farmer's tan Oh, a sweet Midwestern girl Who'd like to meet a Midwestern man I was born right here in the Midwestern USA And I've lived here all the years since then right to the present day And while it isn't always thrilling, I have found it quite fulfilling In fact, the only problem at this time Is that I am still single and impatient to commingle with that familiar and favorite paradigm Oh, it's that sweet Midwestern girl Yes, she would bring me so much joy A discreet Midwestern girl A little shy, a little coy From Wisconsin, Ohio, Kansas, Nebraska Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, North Dakota, South Dakota, Indiana, Iowa, or Illinois Oh, a sweet Midwestern girl that would complete this Midwestern boy. That was Jason Powell again with Sweet Midwestern Girl. Uh, that does it for our show. I want to thank all of the guests we had today. So Peter Thomas, Eric Johnson, Guy Davies, Claudia Guzman, Bobby Drake, and Jason again. Um, I also want to thank the United Performing Arts Fund for sponsoring this whole series, our four episodes. We may be back in the future. We'll see. Uh, also, thank you to Radio Milwaukee for being one of our production partners and Epic Creative. So uh, this has been it for the first season of MKE Arts Live. I've, again, I've been your host, Adam Carr, and see you later. Thank you.